Hello ladies and gentlemen, Divine here once again. COVID-19 is not the only disease that is killing people, so there's also other diseases. And today we'll be looking at insulin calculations. This is a series, we're starting the part two, uh, so it'll be two in two parts. So today we are starting part one of the insulin calculations. These will be looking at the different types of insulin that are there and how do you convert from one regimen to another. So the calculations that are being done on the dose from either combined insulin, premixed insulin to an, uh, individual doses of insulin. So that's what we'll be looking at basically. But today, we'll start to look at it. what is insulin itself, where, uh, what, are the, what are the uses of the insulin itself, and also how does the insulin leave the cells and which cells are involved in the secretion of insulin itself. Follow me on this one. So the first thing what I want to mention here is that insulin basically is a, uh, a peptide hormone. It's a hormone in the body, it's a peptide, of course, that is actually secreted by the endocrine part of the uh, pancreas, okay? So the endocrine part, so of course, that's what secretes the insulin. So insulin basically is secreted by special cells uh, that belongs to a group of cells which are called insulate of larger hands. So when they say insulate of larger hands, simply it's a cluster of cells. This is simply a group of cells, the what called the alpha cells, the beta cells, the delta cells, and all these individual cells secrete different hormones. Now the beta cells are usually found in the middle, in the center. Okay? Just think of B, B as beautiful as women. Women want need to be at the center where they're surrounded by men. So beta cells are found at the center, and these beta cells secrete a hormone known as insulin. Other cells like alpha cells secrete glucagon hormone in their different, of course. So today our focus is in insulin. So insulin is simply is a peptide hormone. It's a long molecule. It has got two chains, the alpha and the beta chain. The beta chain of insulin is made up of about 30 amino acids, while the alpha 20 amino acids. So different modification has been done on this insulin to simply alter the pharmacokinetic parameters of the drug in the human body. So they got the, the insulin of human and then modify it at certain position of amino acids, change a few amino acids. This is simply to enhance or to improve the pharmacokinetic parameters so that we can give it and it can be absorbed and work well in the body. So that's why they did. So basically, that's what we're going to do. So today, what are the uses of insulin? Insulin can be used, used more lowering the sugar levels. So in people with hyperglycemia, diabetes patients, people with high sugar levels, okay, fixed type 1, where there's no insulin. So you use insulin for that condition. You can also use insulin for other things, for example, like in the case of correcting of the correction of the hyperkalemia, where there's too much potassium in the in the body, insulin shifts potassium uh, from uh, outside from outside the cells into the cells. So you can use that. So basically, for more our discussion will be more focused on the uh, regimen insulin and in diabetes, of course. So look at more calculations how we can you convert if the doctor prescribes. Actrophen, which is a combined or by basic by basic form of insulin. How can you translate it to individual regimen for the patient? If you're a farmer, you're in the farmers, and how do you administer? What types of regimen are there? So that's what we're so let's start with. So this is simply uh, I've taken one part of the beta cell. So this is a beta cell. There are many beta cells, of course, about 1.2 million beta cells one person has. So I've just gotten one beta cell here. So how does insulin get secreted? So we say the beta cells are the cells that secrete insulin. Now, how does it, how do they, how, what lead to insulin secretion? Let me mention that the topmost, the curator or the inducer of insulin secretion in the body is glucose. Other amino acids, of course, also they lead to insulin secretion, but basically the topmost is it glucose. So what happens? So here's what happens now, girl. Let's say this is the blood vessel. You eat, and it goes, so when you eat, you have got glucose in the blood. So this glucose is sugar, of course, in the blood. When sugar levels are in the blood, when they, they get, of course, move in the blood and until they reach what you call the pancreas. Okay, in the pancreas, of course, we say there's this insulate of Lanzer hands, which is a cluster of cells having different types of cells. In this case, we're talking about the beta cells. So I've just gotten one beta cell here and explained. So the beta cell has different protein molecules that are embedded around its membrane. One of the things that has what, what called the insulin uh, a protein molecule that is called glucose transporter type 2, which is GLAT2. So this GLAT2, which this beta cell has, is a two-way pump. 
So when sugar level, sugar, glucose enters the beta cell through this GLUT2 protein molecule. When sugar levels enters inside the cell, sugar level, sugar can also be taken back because this uh, protein molecule is a two-way path. So what happens is that the cells has got an enzyme called glucokinase. This enzyme converts the glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate, of course, goes down the process the, and whereby producing pyruvate. Pyruvate, what happens that in the beta cell there is also a mitochondria. The pyruvate itself gets into the mitochondria where it goes through different enzymatic processes and which the end result will be ATP. So this is right here ATP. This is called adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy itself of the cell that the cell uses. Now, apart from that also, the beta cell has got to go uh, mechanically operated potassium channels and also voltage gated of course the ATP potassium channel. So what I'm gonna say is these potassium channels you see here uh, is simply to maintain the membrane potential of course uh, for this beta cell. So it's what you call the potassium ATP sensitive pump. That is what the co-regulator of the insulin secretion. So when we so as I said when we produce ATP from the mitochondria, the ATP of course when it accumulates inside the beta cells it goes on and they sit on this what we call potassium ATP or ATP potassium sensitive pump. It's a sensor. So when, when ATP, which is increasing number in this beta cell, sits on this pump here, this pump closes. That means that you have more potassium inside the cell. That will cause the depolarization and the production of the action potential. When the cell inside the cell becomes more positive, that's what called the depolarization of course has occurred there. This will lead to activation of what we call voltage-gated calcium channels. So calcium, these kind of channels are found here. There will be influx of the entry of calcium inside. As I was saying, when the uh, voltage-gated calcium channels get activated, of course, there will be what we call influx of calcium inside the beta cells. So meaning calcium is coming inside the cell. And we know that calcium is a positively charged uh, cation, it's an a cation. So that means that calcium being a positively charged, it's able to interact with the insulin vesicles. The vesicles is where insulin is being stored inside your beta cells. When, cal when calcium interacts with the insulin vesicles, because these are negatively charged because of the membranes themselves, the lipid membranes, which are negatively charged protein molecules, there will be what you call pushing of these vesicles to the peripheral or to the uh, peripheral uh, sides or zones of the beta cell. This will cause to fusion of, uh, of the vesicles with the membrane and the release of the insulin. And the insulin, of course, when it gets released from here, flows into the blood where it interacts with the receptors and bring about its physiological effects in the body. So this is how insulin leaves the beta cell through the glucose or the sugar when somebody eats. This is the pathway. So next time we will be looking at the different types of insulin that are there, regimen and how the calculations of insulin, how we can convert and the dosages, various methods that are used in uh, putting a patient which regimen. That, so that's what we're going to do next time. Have a great time, stay at home and keep yourself safe.